Welcome back to our lecture introduction to quantum optics. Today we want to discuss the so-called rest states between an atom and a single mode radiation field. And we'll actually see that these rest states will give us a nice reinterpretation of Rabi oscillations in terms of the eigenstates of the atomic system and the light field when there's a coupling between both occurring in our system. So let's get started. So, so far we've treated the atomic system and the light field system independent from each other. We had the atomic Hamiltonian and we had the light field Hamiltonian. And we could describe the states uh, of these systems, the combined states, as a product state of the atom being in one of the states 1 or 2, the ground state or excited state, and then the light field being in kind of any of the harmonic oscillator excited states with a defined photon number n going from 0 to any photon number that we had in the system. So um, now let's just regroup these combined states of the atom and the light field. Let's join the states together in these product states. So remember the notation, for example, 1 comma n plus 2 means the atom is in the ground state and I have n plus 2 photons in my system. Let's group them in energy space and we actually see if we have a near resonant interaction and here I'm considering the case where the detuning between the atom and the light field is slightly blue detuned. So the light field has a slightly larger energy than the atomic resonance frequency. And then we can see that we can group these states actually very effectively together. We see if we would plot them here as a function of energy, those combined states, we see that they group together in pairs where the atom is, for example, here in the grounds, in the excited state 2 with n photons in the system, here it's in the excited state with n plus 1 photons in the system. If we would have be on resonance, then these two states would fall on top of each other. If we're slightly blue detuned, as the case that we're discussing here is supposed to assume, then of course this state with one photon more, but the atom in the ground state, has slightly more energy than the atom in the excited state with one photon less in the system. Okay, and the energy difference here, that's of course just the detuning. The separation between 1 n plus 1 and 2 n plus 1, well that's just the atomic resonance frequency. And the energy difference between 1 n plus 1 and 1 n plus 2, well that's just of course one photon energy difference that we have in the system. So you see we actually uh, can group these eigenstates, these combined eigenstates of the atom and the light field together in these natural manifolds, let's call them E of n, E of n plus 1, E of n minus 1, these pair of states that occur in the system. Now, if we turn on the interaction Hamiltonian as well between the atom and the light field and ask what are the new eigenstates of this system, so what are the eigenstates of the atomic Hamiltonian, the radiation field Hamiltonian and the interaction Hamiltonian, then we find they can actually be formed out of superposition states of these manifold states before these uncoupled basis states that we had when we were discussing just the eigenstates of the atomic Hamiltonian and the radiation field Hamiltonian. So in this uncoupled basis, no interaction between the light field and the atom, we have the eigenstates 1n plus 1, 2n, and then all kind of n that can occur in the system forming and the eigenstates of our Hamiltonian here. But then if we add the interaction Hamiltonian and ask what are the new eigenstates of this system with HA, HR and HI, they actually can be labeled as superposition states of these uncoupled basis states. And the way we label them, we call them 1 bracket N and 2 bracket N. That's just labeling them. They are formed out of linear superposition states out of these manifold states in our manifold E of N. Okay, so here's kind of now written down, if we would do the calculation and diagonalize the uh, total Hamiltonian that we have here and find the eigenstates, we see indeed that these states 1n and 2n, they are actually linear superposition states of the original uncoupled basis states 1n plus 1 and 2n uh, with a so-called mixing angle, theta. So this theta is the so-called mixing angle in the system. with this mixing angle being determined by the ratio of the Rabi frequency to the detuning in the system. Or if we write down now these coefficients, sine theta over 2 or cosine theta over 2, you can see that they have very simple relations connected to the generalized Rabi frequency, which is just the resonant quantized Rabi frequency squared plus the detuning squared, square root of that, uh, divided 
uh, by the generalized Rabi frequency here in the numerator, the generalized Rabi frequency minus delta, and for cosine theta over 2, generalized Rabi frequency plus delta divided by generalized Rabi frequency. So this is, gives us a very simple expression for the new eigenstates of the coupled Hamiltonian. So these are the eigenstates when we turn on the interaction between the light field and the atom. Okay, so let's take a look how uh, this would look like. For example, if we start out, no interaction between the atom and the light field, we're slightly blue tuned, we have our uncoupled basis states, we turn on the interaction, we form the new eigenstates 1 bracket n, 2 bracket n, and they are now shifted in energy. Their new energy spacing is given by h bar omega and delta, this generalized Rabi frequency. So remember, this was just h bar square root of omega n squared plus delta squared in the system. And that, you can see, leads to a shift of the energy levels compared to the original uncoupled basis states that we had. And this energy shift, this delta E, that we can calculate here, this is what we call the AC Stark shift. So it's an energy shift induced by the oscillatory AC electromagnetic field interacting with our atom. Okay? So now let's take a look how this energy separation changes as a function of detuning. So here I'm plotting now again my uncoupled basis states. Let's imagine we have no coupling between the uh, atomic system and the light field system. And let's take the energy of the 2n state as our uh, reference energy zero state. And let's change the detuning now in our system. Okay. So if this is the reference zero state, well that's of course always going to stay uh, at zero energy. That's how we reference our energy to. And then we could ask, where is now the 1 n plus 1 state? Well, if I have one photon more in the system, here and here the atom is in the excited state, here it's in the ground state, but one photon more here, one photon less here. And now I'm increasing the detuning, well then this is just going to increase with the slope delta here. And it's going to have a higher energy for positive delta and a lower energy for negative delta. Right? You see that leads, leads to this crossing in the system uh, that we have if we don't have any coupling between the atom and the light field. Now if we would calculate the eigenstates with the interaction Hamiltonian as a function of detuning, you see that this crossing actually turns into what we call an avoided crossing. So this is the so-called avoided crossing. And that's something you find very often in physics whenever you have energy levels that cross when there's no coupling between kind of uh, the two systems that one is considering and you turn on an interaction Hamiltonian between the two then this crossing turns into what we call an avoided crossing. These energy levels seem to repel each other. So let's take a look. So here's the energy again as a function of detuning and uh, I'm plotting now the energy of the coupled basis states 1 bracket n and 2 bracket n. So very far from resonance, if I'm very off resonant, if my detunings for example were very large, this 1 bracket n state, that is approximately just the original uncoupled basis state 1 comma n plus 1. Likewise the state 2 bracket n for very large detuning is just approximately the uncoupled basis state 2 comma n. And over here and over here, if I'm kind of for large negative detunings, we have the situation that this is just 1 comma n plus 1. So the 2 n state is approximately 1 comma n plus 1 for large negative detunings. And the 1 bracket n state is approximately 2 comma n, the uncoupled basis state for very large negative detunings. And that kind of makes sense intuitively because for large detunings we don't expect the coupling between the atom and the light field to have a big effect because we're basically just off resonant. So only when we're on resonant can we really expect this interaction Hamiltonian to actually have a big effect and change our eigenstates of our system in a dramatic way. And that actually happens on resonance. So if we are on resonance right here so here, where the energy splitting is just given by h bar omega n, 
So this is just a generalized Rabi frequency. So this energy splitting is given by the uh, resonant Rabi frequency in our system. The tuning is zero at that point, so it's just h bar omega n. So right at this point, the eigenenergy states uh, that we have here, one bracket n and two bracket n, are very different from the original uncoupled basis states. In fact, one n, one bracket n, on resonance, that's just one over square root two of one n plus one plus two comma n and the state two bracket n one over square root two is one n plus one minus two comma n for the case where we're right on resonance, okay? So there you can see that the new eigenstates of the coupled system, of the coupled light atom system, are dramatically different from the uncoupled basis states. Okay, so we've seen this avoided crossing, and we see now what these new eigenstates are at resonance. Off resonant, we see that the coupled eigenstates are basically very similar to the uncoupled basis states. Right on resonance, they can be quite different. So now let's reinterpret Rabi oscillations. Let's consider the case where we're on resonance. We're starting with an atom in the ground state with n plus one photons in the system. And we want to calculate the time evolution of the system. Now, when you want to calculate the time evolution of the system, the best thing you can do is always expand the state, the initial state, in terms of the eigenstates of the total Hamiltonian of the system. Because we know for the eigenstates of the total Hamiltonian of the system, the time evolution are just simple phase factors e to the minus i e n t over h bar, where e n is the energy of this nth eigenstate in the system. Okay? So let's do the same thing here. So we have the atom in the ground state, n plus 1 photons, but we know when we turn on the light atom interaction, we're unresonant, that's not an eigenstate. Okay, let's write this as an eigenstate. So remember the eigenstates are these states 1n and 2 bracket n. And now we have this initial state 1 comma n plus 1. So we see this initial state is just a linear superposition of the eigenstates of our coupled Hamiltonian. So this would just be 1n plus 2n. Okay, so how do we know now the time evolution? Now let's calculate Psi of t. Well, Psi of t is now very simple because I know that this state 1n uh, compared to 2 bracket n has an energy shift which is just the quantized Rabi frequency. So this state will evolve with the energy e to the minus i omega n t, 1 bracket n. And this one, let's say that we reference as zero energy, that will then just stay constant to n in the system. Okay, so now let's calculate the probability for the atom to be in the ground state at a certain point in time. How do we do that? Well, we just overlap the atom being in the ground state with n plus one photons in the system with our time evolved state and take the norm squared of that. Okay, so let's take the norm squared of that. That just gives us a one half factor here. And uh, when we now overlap, look how is this one bracket n state? How is this decomposed in terms of my one n plus one and two n states? We see the only state that survives here from this first term is this first part here. From the second term here, it's this first part here. So this would just give me one over square root two e to the minus i omega n t plus one over square root two norm squared. So this would give me one quarter norm e to the minus i omega n t plus one norm squared. And that's just one quarter norm e to the minus i omega n t half plus e to the i omega n t half norm squared. And that's just two cosine omega n t. We square that gives us cosine squared of, sorry, if it's half missing, omega n t over two in our system. 
And that's a natural way. We see what we get are just the Rabi oscillations. The population of being in the ground state oscillates at the Rabi frequency between the ground state and the excited state. And uh, we just recover Rabi oscillations. And now we did it in a very nice way by just considering the new eigenstates of our coupled light atom fuel system and time evolving our initial state, expanding our initial state in terms of these new basis states and time evolving those basis states with the simple phase factors, then projecting back onto the uncoupled basis states to kind of calculate, for example, the probability to be in the ground state. And that directly gives us the time evolution that directly gives us the Rabi oscillations from the dressed states of the light atom system. That's all I wanted to tell you about this dress state system. They're very useful when you want to consider the coupling of an atom light field system and you want to calculate time evolutions, even including spontaneous emission. It's very nice to work in this dress state picture because these are the eigenstates of the light atom system. And whenever you work with the eigenstates, things become simple. That's always a good trick to use in quantum mechanics. Thanks a lot for watching today and see you in the next class.